cold, shivering. It was dark. Though by the light of a street lamp, I noticed a cloud that was my breath as it formed in the cold, still air. It was shooting out in spurts. Where the hell am I? What's going on? The surrealistic vision of a telephone pole emerging from the center of the hood of my precious BMW came into view. I looked at my watch. It was two o'clock in the morning. My breathing slowed as I came to recognize where I was. My car was buried in a telephone pole four feet from the curb on Preston Road. The streets were covered with a sheet of ice. I quickly looked to my right and was relieved to see that no one was there. I fearfully looked down to see how I had fared. My head hurt, but I could move my hands and my feet and there was no blood that I could see. My tuxedo shirt was still white, my tie still tied. I'm okay, I'm okay. Am I okay? I kicked open the door. As I got out and stood beside my brave chariot, I realized that it had clearly given itself up to save my life. I remembered the sales pitch. The engine is designed to dive under the passenger compartment upon impact. There was no other explanation as I studied the telephone pole's position in the midst of my hood. The walk was not easy in the 20 degree weather on the slick icy streets about a mile from the accident. While my body was urgently trying to get home and get warm, my mind was solely focused on what might have been. Over the crunch, crunch, crunch of my feet, as they made their way home, I kept seeing that telephone pole in that position and knowing that clearly this was a gift to me from my creator, a real second chance. As I opened the door to the house, I felt the warmth so needed rush over me. I also felt a switch turned inside of me that could not be reversed. It was Sunday morning and I didn't go to sleep. Now was the time for a change. I wasn't sure why. I was pretty satisfied with my life. I had a college degree, been married for five years, so now divorced for a couple, had a good job. I lived in a nice house and a great neighborhood, and I was an eligible bachelor in Dallas in the 70s. <laughs> but, it, but it sank in that below these surface realities was a self-centered life that was not being spent in any meaningful way. I decided right then it was time to begin a real life with a family. There was only one problem, a big one. I would have to find somebody to spend that life with. And that meant that I would have to put myself out there and put my wounded heart on the line again. My relationships had not always been good. I fell for the kind of women that were bound, no, predestined to crush me. I reviewed those relationships like one sees their life fly before their eyes. It was short and not sweet. The instant review revealed a pattern. I was so shy that the girls I liked were not shy. Then, inevitably, their lack of shyness manifested itself in infidelities and a broken heart for me. It became clear that two actions were needed to make this change worth the fresh start I had been given. First, I needed to find a way not to be shy, and second, I needed a scientific, non-emotional way to protect my heart through the voyage ahead. I wrote down an approach opposite to the one that I had taken before. I focused on her values first instead of her looks. No values, no dice. I called it the filter. I actually signed a pledge at the, that at the first sign that the values were not there that I would leave no matter what. With that, I finally went to sleep as the sun came up over the icy fairy land outside. Fast forward a year or so, the lessons from that night took hold. 
I took a Dale Carnegie course right after the accident. I had to make three speeches a night in front of 45 people I didn't know one night a week for 14 weeks. At the end of that course, there was no shyness left in me. It left me better able to express my unique point of view and that helped my business. It made a difference in me as well as I became a confident young man on a mission to find my soulmate. The filter worked well, protected me from pain. And by the way, I bought another BMW with a new <laughs> sense of its worth. I decided to sell my house to finance some of my new outside business interests. I did not know at the time how important that decision would be. The house had been on the market a short period of time when sitting in my office I received the strangest call. It was a young woman who was asking me to hold my house off the market until she got back from a trip in four weeks or so. I didn't, certainly didn't commit to holding the house off the market, but I was very interested in who this lady might be. I learned she was smart and she had just moved out back to Dallas from having been in California for eight years. She was also from a family my family had known for years, but we had never met. She indeed sounded interesting. A month later, she bought my house. Nine months later, we were married. <laughs> the house formed the framework for our relationship. Obviously, we both liked it. We soon found... <laughs> We soon found we liked each other as well. During those nine months, we grew from acquaintances to lovers. I told her of the night of the crash and how it made me committed to, find a, to start a family. She too was looking for a fresh start from her years in LA. She too was looking for meaning and purpose. We dug into each other with tears and laughter and experienced a happiness we never knew it was possible. The glow of love that grew between us was strong and real. When we decided to marry, we focused on the kids that might come forth. We knew we never wanted to experience the pain of divorce again, but more importantly, we never wanted to put our kids through it. We knew that if we were married, this was it, a permanent decision not to be taken lightly. So we crafted a very strong, though simple, prenuptial agreement. <coughs> We could leave at any time, but the terms were set. I got her right leg, she got mine. <laughs> that crash was a turning point. I emerged wise enough to focus and find the love of my life. That was 34 years and four great kids ago. Alas, though we had to change from BMWs to Suburbans, it's been a great ride. <laughs>